Welcome back to the Healthy with Heartland podcast. I'm filling in for your usual host, Justin Freistadt, the Bavette Barista, or as we like to know and call him, the Kulet Cruiser. Or the Sultan of Sourcing. The Sultan of Sourcing. <laughs> but he is on vacation right now on the beautiful island of Maui. Awesome. I love Maui. Hope you're enjoying that. So we're filling in for him. I'm Simon. That's Shannon, How's my co-host. Going? We are the creative directors of the Healthy with Heartland podcast. And today we're going to be talking about recipes you need to try in 2022. Absolutely. The ultimate foodie recipes. Yep. So before we get into that, I'm going to send it over to Shannon for some announcements. All right. Welcome back, Heartland family. Just a couple quick announcements here for you. Won't take too long, but if you're ready to restock from home without the hassle, uh, we got you this month. We can do Nick's ice cream free with your reorder. So you can choose any of our amazing flavors. We got cookies and cream. We got salted caramel. If you're a coffee lover, we got coffee caramel, um, strawberry, mint chocolate chip, and for those chocolate lovers, triple chocolate. So definitely make sure you take advantage of that. That's going to be all month long in the month of June. So you can take advantage of that until June 30th. If you are going to be receiving your reorder, make sure to take a picture of your freezer or your delivery. Make sure to post it on Facebook and tag at Heartland Connect for a chance to win our $500 monthly raffle, which we choose at the end of every single month. So definitely make sure to tune in for that. Uh, We love to thank all of our amazing drivers. Uh, We know you see them out there working hard and it's getting hot. So definitely make sure to uh, submit those pictures. Wonderful. With that, let's get into today's podcast. All right. So Shannon, I know you have some recipes yes. uh, for what we're going to be talking about, but Absolutely. recipes you need to try in 2022. If you have not already tried them, definitely need to try them. And what we did is we tweaked them a little bit. Yeah. We went ahead and we added some of our products that we have here in house mm-hmm. to go ahead and be able to incorporate in these delicious and wonderful recipes. Yeah. So not only are we going to talk about the most recommended recipes, we're going to talk about, I guess, how you could heartland fi them. Mm, that's a new one. <laughs> so if you're familiar and if you guys are a foodie as most of our Heartland foodies are, you're probably familiar with the website Eat This Not That. Um, we're going to talk about uh, whether you're new to cooking or whether you know, you're know you a seasoned pro. Um, we definitely have a recipe that you're going to love in this stack. So let's get into it. Let's do it. All right. So the first recipe is going to be plain and simple. It's one of those breakfast foods that uh, you don't think of as a traditional, you know, dinner time or weeknight recipe, but it's definitely one of those favorites. And how could it not be with all of the amazing bacon and our bacon fans that we have at Heartland Foods? What is it? So it's breakfast tacos with eggs and bacon. All right. So one of those things you can eat. For breakfast, or you can eat them for dinner. I like having breakfast or dinner sometimes. Exactly, yeah. So eggs are not only uh, an awesome protein choice, but they can also help boost your metabolism and your energy levels, and they can even leave you feeling fuller for longer. Mm. So that's just a quick tip. Um, Not only is it delicious, but it's also good for you, and you could pair it along with a Heartland favorite, which is our bacon, and there's so many options to choose from. So whether, you know, you like thick cut, whether you like, you know, traditional uh, thin style bacon or, uh, you know, whether you want turkey bacon, Apple we pretty much smoked. have have any single kind that you can oh like. Yeah. Absolutely. So. Here's a quick tidbit as well. Did you know that breakfast tacos originated in Austin, Texas? No, I did not know that. Yep. Breakfast tacos specifically. Yep. Uh, so basically, I mean, as everyone knows, it's a uh, it's a cross pollination between Mexican culture and Anglo-Germanic ingredients that were available in Texas. Hmm. Right. It's not really smart. I'm getting it from Google. <laughs> the Google's awesome. Right. But uh, uh, there's also, there's a bit of a rivalry, right? So I guess Austin, Texas calls them breakfast tacos. Mm-hmm. And then other places like California and other places are calling them breakfast burritos. Interesting. Right. But the, the controversy is in Texas or in Austin, they say mm-hmm. you never fold or you never wrap your, your, your taco, right? Okay. It's just a fold. It's open. Right. It's still open. It's not right. sealed. So I think that makes sense, right? Okay. And what California's argument is that if it's... It's a burrito. Interesting. It's a burrito. They wrap them up. Okay. So just fun, in case you were wondering. Fun, fun fact there. But a quick tip is breakfast for dinner is always fun and delicious when you have Heartland Foods. That's right. Let's go on to the next one, which is Asian salmon or Cobia burger with... Wasabi mayo. Mm. I thought this one was really interesting. Mm -hmm. 
Um, we did a special actually last month with our burgers. So maybe you guys are familiar with the salmon or the Cobia burgers. Maybe you even got them on your reorder. You um, yep. This would be a really awesome uh, opportunity for you to take advantage of that. Um, you know, you can mix things up by swapping out the beef for something else that's protein packed like fish. Uh, we recommend the Cobia or the salmon, um, but you could do turkey burger. You could do tuna if that's your thing. So there's so many different options that, you know, you could do. Uh, with this one creative part that I really thought was cool was how they added the wasabi mayo and maybe Simon you could talk a little bit about how they could add something like that to a dish uh, so wasabi mayo uh, when you go to the interwebs uh, basically it just talks about uh, combining mayo with wasabi paste lemon juice and ginger in a bowl and you basically just whisk it okay you can add that to the top of it if you like spicy you can add more wasabi if you like a little less spicy add a little less wasabi wasabi is basically like a uh, horseradish okay. Japanese horseradish that's cool. And like you mentioned, by cooking it at home and making it yourself, you can control the level of spice. So if you're super particular about that, or maybe the kiddos are, that's something to keep in mind as well. Yep. Yep. I've had wasabi. Oh, I mean, I probably shouldn't get into that. Probably too much information. <laughs> Sometimes you have the nose running and all kinds it's of stuff. It's yeah. super hot. It's really spicy. You can get you, yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right, cool. So let's go on to the next one, mm -hmm. which was air fryer loaded meat calzones. We know that air fryers have been incredibly popular probably since i don't know 2020 yeah but this is the first time i've ever heard about doing a calzone in the air fryer usually right. you think you know the oven the traditional way is <laughs> probably the oven yeah um i guess you could yeah you could do it in an oven or like any kind of um broiler convection oven mm -hmm. and the air fryer is probably just like a, a quicker you know way to get it done which is i mean a lot of people are, are super busy mm. so if you need a, a quick and easy calzone type meal yeah in the air fryer <laughs> There you go. I felt bad because the story said, although it never achieved the kind of superstar status enjoyed by its celebrated cousin, the pizza. Ooh. Calzones never get the credit that they deserve, but uh, they're typically so uh, stuffed with pepperoni, sausage, meatballs. You could really do it any way you like. Um, and uh, I mean, veal, beef, pork, you could do that. You can mm. make your own meatballs and stuff it inside. Or if you're not really in the mood for a meat calzone, you could do something uh, a little lighter. You could put you know, veggies in there. Um, you could do tomato, feta, you could do mozzarella cheese, spinach, things like that. So, so many different things that you could do. And I'm adding meat to mine. Definitely some pepperonis and definitely some... I'm sure we have our carnivore our oh, carnivore yeah. fans out there, so... Mine's going to be loaded <laughs> with meat. Got it. Um, but yeah, just so you were aware, calzones are obviously from Italy, Naples more specifically. Hmm. Um, they were designed to be eaten with hands. So, if you're eating a calzone with a fork and a knife, you're doing it wrong. You need to be eating it with your hands. It needs to be dripping out mozzarella cheese and the sauce. It's one of those, out of it. those messy foods. Oh, yeah. Well, I wouldn't even call it messy. It's delicious. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> um, but, yeah. So, traditional calzone indicates that it was made by simply folding over a single round of pizza crust. So, it's basically your pizza crust mm -hmm. folded over. Kind of like a taco. Got it. But, yeah. An Italian taco. <laughs> there we go. We have a little fusion here. All right. Let's go on to the next one, which I thought was kind of creative and a little bit unique. Um, right. Grilled cheese is one of those things that I feel like, you know, you can find anywhere. Everyone's familiar with it. But they did a twist on the grilled cheese sandwich by adding apples and bacon. <laughs> First of all, they put bacon in there. So, you know, you can't go wrong with that. Um, <laughs> and they added bomb for bacon. Definitely. And they, uh, they added the apples in there as well for just a little bit of sweetness. So And probably a little crunch, too. I mean. Because, you know, in your grilled cheese, you want the uh, the bread to be kind of, I like mine crispy, mm -hmm. right? But I don't like the crust. I got to make sure the crust is off. Okay, I'm really so you're a crust like cutter. That's right. Got That's it. Right. right. And you got to cut it in, in, in the triangle. You can't have it just rounded like a whole sandwich. It's got to be kind of a triangle. The crust can't be on there. And it's got to be oozing with the cheese. And I think the yeah, apple is probably cheese. a good little touch. I haven't tried it yet, but I think it's a good little touch to add a little bit of crispness and, like you said, a little sweetness too. Yeah. I mean, the reason why they were recommending it is because they said it was a l it was delicious, but it was a little bit of a healthier option. Um, mm. I'm, I'm not sure exactly how, but I know that pork and apples go really, really well together. So I mm. can imagine that combination of, you know, the sweet and the salty uh, bacon, like you mentioned, with the crunch from the bread. And in the recipe oh that yeah. we'll post, they use the whole grain bread. So maybe that was contributing to the, the health, uh, you know, factor. But yeah, something unique. They called it a funky version of uh, the grilled cheese sandwich. So a traditional American classic. Yeah, absolutely. And the grilled cheese, I mean, people have been putting cheese on bread, you know, for Long centuries. Yeah. You know what I mean? Back to, I mean, I think it's called, and forgive me if I'm butchering this, but I think the French called it like the... Uh, Montessor, I forget what it's called. And anyway, the French <laughs> have been doing it for a while. They, okay. they, they do their certain type. Like um, it. But in the 20s, I think it was Otto Frederick uh, Rowetter, okay. uh, basically the father of sliced bread. We got to give him his flowers. He basically came up with the uh, 
the machine that cut sliced bread. So shout out to him. And oh, wow. then also, then in the 1949, in 1940s, basically you know him, Shannon, because you're a fan of the Patriots. Okay. But the Kraft family, they came up with these sliced cheese. So they started to put those um, sliced cheeses on that sliced bread. Boom. Hence your grilled cheese. Wow. And I guess I actually think it was in like the Navy's cookbook. So they were actually cooking it for the military during World War II. Oh, wow. So Very cool. They saw all the way back then. Awesome. But this is a new thing, obviously, with the uh, the apples and the bacon. Yeah. It's a little gourm- a gourmet twist on the uh, grilled cheese there. Right. All right. Let's move on to a, a actually another classic here. I don't know if you can call this an American classic because I'm not sure that it was created here. Um, but pasta bolognese, which a lot of people are very familiar with, traditionally made with veal, beef, and pork. Um, so it's a classic comfort food. Um, but the traditional recipe could traditionally be packed with calories and saturated fat because they're using veal, beef, and pork. They said you can make it a healthier option if you want to use uh, ground chicken and ground turkey, which we have both of at Heartland Foods. Yeah, sounds good. Yep. I love that's that's some of my favorite pastas, the bolognese. Yeah, it's always good. Traditional it's meat sauce. Yep. Obviously, it's Italian, um, and the name actually comes from an initial recipe in Bologna. Okay. Well, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly either. <laughs> involving actually tagliatelle and a rich ragu. Okay. That's where it started from. That's where it originates from. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. But yeah, it's one of it's one of those favorites, and it's an easy weeknight meal. So. Right. Uh, whether you prefer the veal beef and pork and the traditional style bolognese or you like to make it your own or do a lean version with the turkey and the chicken, you really can't go wrong. And you can make your own sauce too. You know, start with the mirepoix and then add a little bit of the tomato paste and mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. So, Yep. If not, you can cook with a, the with a rouse or we have some sauces that we actually yep. um, give customers as well. So you can yep. we got those traditional there. tomato sauce. If we have tomato paste if you want to create your own. Uh, like Simon mentioned, so lots of different options there, and especially if you you know prefer something spicy, you could do like a spicy tomato sauce or lots of different options. All right. Let us know in the comments. What are you putting in your bolognese? Are you doing the veal, beef, and pork? Are you just doing beef and pork? Are you just doing beef? Um, let us know in the comments. What are you doing? Absolutely. All right, guys. Let's go on to the next one. This is one of my personal favorites. So the Chicago dog. I don't know why, but I just. Love <laughs> All right, so quiz. Do you know what comes on the Chicago dog? Pickles. Pickle does come on it, yep. I know that's one thing. What else? Uh, I'm, I'm drawing a blank now. But I'm I know giving pickles you a, a Windy City quiz here. <laughs> what else comes on? Um, so it basically comes with a poppy seed bun. Okay. The hot dog must be all beef. And then it's topped off with pickles, mm-hmm. diced tomatoes. That's what throws me off. And yeah. peppers as well. So like... Yep. Um, I don't know if it's specifically pepperoncinis, but I know they're like um, sweet and hot kind of peppers, Mm -hmm. and they put that uh, dressed on top. So kind of like a cheesesteak. Kind of like a cheesesteak. Yeah. But Chicago dog. Exactly. And so with the hot dogs, I know that everyone's very particular because depending on like where you are or you know where you're from, there's a specific style. The one thing I'll mention is that they said you will spoil the splendor of a Chicago dog by adding ketchup. So they said that's the one thing that's a no no. Don't add ketchup to your Chicago dog. Right. You're supposed to just have it with the toppings itself. Yeah. So that was one interesting thing that I thought. Have you ever had a Chicago dog? I have not. No. I have not. Have you? Uh, yeah. Uh, what was it? There was a restaurant. It wasn't Ted's. It was the other DC3. Okay. And they had a whole bunch of different kind of hot dogs. Mm-hmm. And I had a Chicago dog there. Oh, wow. They had Korean dog. They had all kinds of different hot dogs. Interesting. I could try them all. I love hot dogs. <laughs> And it's summertime. It's yeah. Perfect summer food. And for those of you who are a part of the Heartland family who also enjoy hot dogs, uh, we have, you know, all beef hot dogs. We have more than just hot dogs, actually. We got bratwurst. We have andouille sausage. We have mm. Italian sausages, hot, turkey mild, sage, sweet. sweet, mild. Yeah. Anything you could want. And if you prefer it in a link or you prefer it ground, you can have it any way you like. Mm. Here's a test. We should have a contest. Mm-hmm. Probably. I mean, I'm not going to put it out here now, but eventually we should have a contest on a build your own dog and, and you can use any kind of meat, any kind oh, of bun okay. and just have the most creative one. I like it. Yeah. That'd be cool. That'd be sweet. Heads up, Heartland Foodies. You heard it here first. <laughs> All right. The next one is going to be slow cooker beef and beer. So this one only takes 10 minutes of prep. That's why my ears perked up. And they're using Guinness as the beer for the recipe itself. But you can, I mean, they're using a dark beer, but you can use any kind of yeah. beer for it, right? You could use depending any beer that you like, yeah, depending on the flavor you're going for. Now, they paired the dish with, I believe, like onions and mushrooms, so that darker beer probably complements those flavors pretty well. Oh, yeah. Um, 
the part that was awesome is that you're just really throwing it all in the slow cooker or the Instapot at one time. So you're not, you know, sitting there waiting for it to cook, checking it, perhaps overcooking it. You're kind of just setting it and forgetting it. Mm-hmm. It allows you to do, you know, other things kind of with your time. And then you can enjoy it at the end of the, the day. And, you know, it's perfectly cooked. Yep. So uh, that we always recommend the slow cooker or the Instapot in terms of convenience. It's a lot easier right. to put together those meals. Some more convenient meals, uh, you know, like you said, on a busy day. Yeah. This is a go-to. All right, cool. So let's move on to the next one. Chicken and enchilada casserole. Now, I feel like this one's probably geared to more of like the colder weather. Mm -hmm. Not that soups can't be delicious in the summertime because soup is always good. Um, But this is another one of those slow cooker, you know, Instapot recipes where you're kind of just throwing everything in there. Um, And it's going to really hit the spot on one of those, you know, cold, gloomy or, uh, you know, rainy days. Oh, yeah. For sure. Enchiladas is one of those, again, another Mexican-American dish mm-hmm. um, that we're fusing together basically to create, you know, this casserole of goodness. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, they also said, too, it, don't worry if you have a lot of leftovers because it's something that's very easy to freeze. Mm. And when you thaw it out and you eat it, you know, the next day or a couple of days later, or a few weeks later, it's going to taste just as good as when you first had it. Probably the same thing with the stew that we just mentioned as well. Mm-hmm. Any of those stews, chilies, things like that, I feel like if you let them sit even for a day or so, the next day that you have them, yeah. they're fire. Absolutely. All right, let's hit the next one, which is honey mustard salmon. I thought this was interesting because um, if you just get our regular salmon and not one of our marinated options, this is something that you could easily put together. Um, it's a simple glaze. Um, it's basically quick and easy. And uh, we'll post the link to all these recipes so that if you're interested in trying one of them at home, of course, you can post it in the foodie group and tag us. We'd love to see it. But if you want to know um, you know, how to whip up a couple of these ingredients, sauces, or recipes, we'll definitely include that for you. Um, but the honey mustard sauce is the added finishing perfect touch to any sort of fish dish. Um, here they paired it with salmon. Salmon. And with the honey mustard, you're using that Dijon mustard, right? Because it gives it a little bit of that kick. Yep. And you could use any kind of mustard you want, whether you like a spicy mustard or, you know, That's the right. Dijon and um, adding the honey Yellow to it is going to add the kind of sweetness. Mm. Yeah. And we, if you, if that's not your thing and honey mustard really, you know. You know has a really good honey mustard? Who's that? Chick-fil-A. Okay. <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> Interesting. And quite off topic, but... <laughs> Yes, My it, apologies. it's fantastic. Maybe honey mustard isn't your thing, and that's okay, too, because we have maple barbecue marinated salmon, and we also have a Jamaican jerk marinated salmon as right. well. So if you don't want to do your own marinating, you can take advantage of that. Right. That sounds good. All right, stick with us, Heartland fam. There's only a couple more left. Next, we're going to move on to some churrasco-style skewers with chimichurri sauce, which I feel Mm. like this is one of those perfect weeknight or weekend recipes uh, where you can just throw it on the grill. You know, you put it on the skewer. It's almost like a crock pot recipe where it's kind of, you know, doing its own thing. Mm -hmm. And then you can enjoy it with the family. So uh, what are your thoughts on this one? Uh, I mean, right now it's in season. Mm. So that's a good thing. You know, the grills are probably, you know, hot. You probably don't have to, you know, brush the dust off. They're already pretty, people are already probably using them because of Memorial Day and things like that. So that's yeah. a great summer recipe. Skewers, I love because, again, you're eating them with your hands. You don't need fork. You don't need a knife. Yeah. And you have them on the stick. Um, but you got to be really careful with them as well because yeah. you can poke your cheek or. Yeah. You got to gotta definitely yeah. be careful. Yeah. Safety first. Right. Of course. Right. And a chimichurri. Don't try to stick. Yeah. Take them off the stick. Chimichurri is another one of those um, sauces that's, you know, pretty easy to make. Um, and if, you know, that's something that you want to kind of add to any kind of steak that we carry, it would be an awesome addition. So get this. There's some controversy okay. on the chimichurri sauce. What is it? So what I found was there's one idea that chimichurri comes from this boss country word that means a mixture of several things in no particular order. Okay. The other idea is that it's a modification of Jimmy's curry. Jimmy... McMurray being an Irish soldier in the 19th century who was traveling with indigenous troops to fight for the independence of Argentina. I have literally never heard that story in my entire life. Well, you heard it here first. I'm glad to bring that news (laughs) to you. (laughs) That was crazy. (laughs) Yeah, very interesting. So, quick tip. That's right. So, which one would you believe? Are you believing in Jimmy McMurray? Or do you just believe in this word that it's, you know, ingredients of all these things come together? Because are you... Do you know what's in a chimichurri sauce? I think it's like pesto, uh, obviously oil, oil, some sort of citrus, mm-hmm. like lemon or lime, mm-hmm. um, and then herbs, oh, yeah. like citrus. a bunch of herbs, mm-hmm. parsley, cilantro. And Argentinians oh. are known for, you know, their, their churrasco style meats and steaks and mm-hmm. sausages and all those kind of things. Absolutely. 
But yeah, let us know in the comments which one do you believe. Do you not believe any of these? <laughs> you never know with the Googles, right? All right. Big the news. <laughs> the next one is going to be Beijing wings. Oh, this I had never heard about this. This one got me wings. excited because I was like, okay, how is this going to be, you know, different than the traditional style? Wings are wings. You know, everyone loves them. Uh, what? Depending on who you talk to, wings okay. could be, okay. Okay. I mean, I like them super crispy. Some people can have them, you know, a little bit less crispy. Oh, no, extra, extra crispy. Some people want them naked. Some people want the sauce. Mm. Well, it really depends. No sauce, no seasoning. But you know how sauce you can tell someone who really knows wings? Who? If they know how to eat them. Okay. So you take one of those two and you have to eat it from the one side. And if you can pull off the entire meat and everything. You're a champ. Then you know what's up. And you know what you're doing. Oh, okay. yeah. Okay. All right. So I don't know how to do that yet. I'm so practicing. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm not doing that much. So um, this one was very interesting because um, the only difference is that they soak and marinate them in an Asian marinade, obviously, because this is Beijing, mm -hmm. a Beijing wing, um, but that they are going to be roasted or grilled instead of fried. So not only is it going to be kind of a different eating experience and a different flavor, you know, but it's also going to be a little bit more healthy for you. Nice. I wonder if you if you were going to grill them, if you did them on like the charcoal or with some wood or something, if mm. you can give them an even a little bit more of a like a smoky. So say, what if you could, what if you smoked them? Right. That would be cool too. Yeah, absolutely. And Beijing, I mean, the any kind of the Asian flavor wings. I mean, yep. in DC they got the mambo sauce, so it's like a nice kind of sweet, savory kind barbecue of kind of flavor. The, ma the mambo sauce. Yeah, what flavor uh, is that? That's kind of it's sweet. Sweet. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Delicious though. Okay. But anyways, give uh, Beijing wings a try. You know, maybe you're kind of sick of the traditional medium style wings. Also, too, one thing I learned when looking up this is that uh, like wings have a lot of their own natural fat. Mm -hmm. So when you kind of like fry them, you're almost like, you know, doubling that up. It's almost like, you know, fat on fat. So if you do the grilling. Like confit kind of. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So if that's what you're going for, then perfect. But if not, and you do a grill, an air fry, or, you know, a roast, mm -hmm. um, then you're going to negate some of that saturated fat that maybe you're looking to do. Or maybe not. Okay. Just a quick tip. Appreciate it. All right. Let's see. The next one. Chicken noodle soup. Chicken noodle soup. Can the never have too much of that. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, that one's, a, that one's always a, a good one. Yeah, get this. So we were talking about Beijing wings. Mm -hmm. And did you know that? Chicken, well, the chicken noodle soup it essentially was invented by the Chinese. I did not know that. Now you know. And they basically referred to it as noodles in broth. So it wasn't chicken noodle soup the way kind of Campbell's coined it and marketed it. Okay. But it was just the uh, noodles in the broth. And that's kind of where it took, started from, originated. No from. vegetables, no meat? Uh, there were, there was, I mean, obviously there was chicken in it. There oh, was okay. Chicken in it, okay. But it was just the, the chicken noodles. Chicken and the noodles. noodles. Yeah. Okay. Not chicken, it's chicken. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> I don't know if there's multiple chicken. <laughs> All right. Well, that's always a, that's a, a classic. And uh, it should be added to your rotation stat, if not already. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure I, people have had to try it with the Murray's chicken. Oh, yeah. Had to. It's probably. Right. And we talk all the time about the difference in flavor between the traditional you know, Cornish cross or traditional broiler style right. chicken and then the heritage breed that you get with Murray's. Absolutely. The flavor, the tenderness is just. Unmatched. So different than. Unrivaled. Yeah. <laughs> You're joking, but it's really. No, I'm being totally serious. <laughs> I'm being totally serious. It I really is. Yeah. And once you have had it, it you can't really go back. I can't. I mean, you could. Well, you can go back. You're just gonna taste the difference. Yeah, you absolutely. will definitely taste the difference. Even when you go out to restaurants and mm -hmm. you have a chicken breast or something like that, you definitely notice the difference from the Murray's family chicken. Yeah. So heritage is where it's at. That's right. It's all about the breeding. All right, we got Here's two. When you need yeah, I was gonna say <laughs> that was for you, Justin. All right, we got three left. Stick with us. Um, the next one. This one got me excited. I like this one. This was one skillet taco pasta. Everyone loves tacos. Everyone loves pasta. It's another fusion. It's a fusion of both and less cleanup because you only got one pan. So you're basically just mixing up all the ingredients, whatever your taco flavor, you know, meat is. So you could do beef. You could do ground chicken. You could do ground turkey. You could do, like, literally any kind of protein that you'd like. Would you do fish? You could. If you wanted well, to. You, you like fish taco? Yeah. Fish taco pasta? I don't know. I don't know if I would be that brave. But you could do it. I was just thinking. You know, cobia, maybe something like that. Lighter, white, flaky fish you could throw in there. Yeah. I'm trying to incorporate more fish into my diet. That's what okay. I'm saying. Okay. All right. 
Well, the kopi is good enough on its own. I don't think you need to make it into a taco pasta. But if I was feeling, you know, a little... <laughs> yeah, you could. Creative. I could but if I was doing that, I would probably go more for, like, a uh, pasta with, like, a lime sort of cilantro mm. kind of, like, sauce where it's not going to be as heavy as uh, this one where they're incorporating some of, like, the tomato and that. Um, you could keep it, like, you could keep it lighter. Yeah. Like, um... Because it kind of reminded me, like, when you said the tomatoes, it kind of reminded me of, like, a chiopino almost. If you were going to do it with... <coughs> mm, excuse me. If you were going to do it with some sort of seafood. But right. if not, I mean, you're, you're, it's your regular taco pasta kind of deal. Yeah. But you could add beans. You could add corn. You could do peppers. Um, s- there's so many things you could do with it. And then if you want to top it off with, like, cotica cheese or, like, with avocado, shrimp. you could do it with shrimp. Yep. Easily. I love avocado. Yeah. It's really, w- it's really up to your preference. It's... It's the same flavor profiles as what you would do your tacos with. You're just adding a noodle and making it into a pasta. Can't beat it. Yep. It's probably good with leftovers, too. Absolutely. All right. This next one was bacon jam. I think this was kind of like a trending topic because I think it was... It was, um, it was a TikTok fad, wasn't it? Yeah, but it was... What's his name? I'm not sure. Oh, man. The chef. The main chef. I'm trying to think of his name. Right. Gordon what? Ramsay? Gordon Ramsay. Okay. It was him. He basically was, I think it was on like one of his, it was either on TikTok or it was on some social media where he was basically buttering one of his pieces of bread with a bacon jam. And then from then people were like, oh, I, they have to try this. So they started making it at home. Okay. I think I'm definitely going to have to try that this summer. He was buttering his be- bread with the bacon jam. With well, the whatever. Bacon jam. It look, I mean, it looks amazing. I'm just looking at the photos of it. But it's basically like a rendering of bacon, caramelized onions, sweet brown sugar, tart apple cider vinegar. And I guess in this recipe, they added coffee mm. and a little bit of chili powder. Okay. So they said uh, it's 100% better than regular jam. If you don't believe me, try it yourself. So that's this might be one where uh, you know, we got to do the challenge and we got to try it. And then the challenge after that is going to be not only do you put it on bread, but what else can you put it on? Yeah, I've seen um, I've seen them put it on burgers. Mm, burgers. It was really good on burgers. Yeah. Like you mentioned, bread is always a good one. Um, but essentially, you could put it on a sandwich. You could put it like as a topping on anything, really. Breakfast tacos. Yeah. And oh, you could put it. Uh, yes, yeah, so you could do bacon jam breakfast tacos with your. What eggs. about those? Uh, the grilled cheese sandwich. You could put it on your grilled cheese sandwich. With the apples. Yeah, you could do the apples and you the bacon and jam. Bacon. Wow, you got some pretty good ideas. Thank you. That's good stuff. <laughs> All right, cool. Yeah, and they said uh, pretty much we'll go on anything else that you could ever dream of. Breakfast sandwiches will never be the same, and Brussels sprouts will never be the same, and you will never be the same. Brussels sprouts was a good one. Yeah, Brussels sprouts is a good one. You blew my mind with that one. So usually you do like a sriracha lime kind of Brussels sprouts or something yeah. like that. Or you uh, do add some bacon, but a bacon yep. jam? Yep. Mm. Absolutely. Uh, and then the next one. All right, let's wrap it up with also another one of my favorites. So these are the, I'm going to let you say it. The Bisley at Tacos. I can't even remember the R's. Bisley at Tacos. Okay. Betty at Tacos. I can't say it. No, you said it better than me. (laughs) But these are super delicious. I mean, this was another one of the TikTok specials, which was influenced by traditional Mexican cuisine. Um, It's slow-cooked stew that can be eaten standalone, or it can be filling for tacos. So what they do is they put the filling from the stew inside the tacos. That's like the pulled, traditionally it's beef. Mm -hmm. Well, no, actually, it's goat. So get this. Uh, I did a little bit of research on the interweb once again okay i like it so basically what happened was <laughs> what had happened was mm-hmm. they uh i think it was the spanish conquistadors okay so they had a whole bunch of goats when they were in mexico and they were you know doing their thing there um and they had too many goats so they ended up giving them to the native people the native people ended up taking them and using them and they called it bithia, which is basically uh i guess it's a derogatory term um let me just make sure i don't say the wrong thing <laughs> here give me a moment uh, okay, anyway. But it's a derogatory term that just basically means, like, uh, uh, worthless, right? Okay. So they were giving them the goats because goat meat is usually tough, okay. really, right? So then what the natives ended up doing is, like you said, slow stewing it, mm. right? And then after they slow stewed it, and it's basically like a makeshift oven. It reminded me of, like, an emu, fr- like, in Hawaii, right? Okay. The way that they built these kind of uh, these ovens. Yeah. And so these ovens are built. It's slow roasted, and then they took that, and then they basically, you could eat it on your hand. You could eat it in a taco. Um, but then, eventually, after, you know, years and years and years. Uh, I think it was in 2018, there was like a s- big thing in California where they started doing the same birria tacos, but then they started doing them with beef. And then along came the consomme. 
And oh, that's yeah. the actual the stew, sauce. the fat that mm-hmm. goes on the side. Yeah. Right? Akin to like Santa Claus and, and cookies and milk, right? You basically take the taco, you dip it in the consomme, and you get that fat and all that flavor. Yeah. And it's really, I mean, it's wonderful. Yeah. So like the stew that stewed the meat eventually becomes like the dipping sauce. So it's almost 100%. like you're getting to use it twice and you get all that amazing fat and flavor. Yep. It really is like fantastic. It's a super comfort food style dish, but it's good at literally any time. Yep. And so like I said, it's traditionally made with goat, but you can do beef, you can do lamb, you can do sheep, um, you can do any of those meats and and basically slow roast them. It's not to be confused with barbacoa because barbacoa is kind of similar. It's kind of almost... Not the same thing, but it's kind of similar, and that's why, you know, these were made with goat, but um, barbacoa is made with beef. Okay. Obviously. All right. Cool. A little history for you. I, well, I appreciate that. It's a fun fact. Well, yeah, th- I mean, I think that was a pretty good overview of some of the most popular, you know, recipes that were recommended in 2022. So if mm-hmm. you have not tried them, or if you have tried them, definitely, the comments. definitely comment below, post a picture, or definitely post a photo in the foodie group and tag us so that we can see it. We would love to uh, to feature that as well. Um, and if you have any questions about where you can find any of these recipes, we will post a link in the description of this post as well. And with that, uh, do you have anything else before we wrap up? Um, no, share this with a friend who you think would uh, enjoy this episode. If you have any recipes that you'd like us to talk about or do research on, put them in the comments as well. Uh, make sure you tag us, Heartland Connect. Um, other than that, we do appreciate all our listeners that are listening to it on um, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, um, of course, after the fact. And then if you're watching this live, we do appreciate you watching and turning in and viewing in. Absolutely. Appreciate you joining us, Heartland family. We're going to be back again next week for another awesome episode. And with that, stay healthy with Heartland.